to share. And maybe yeah, like and I would, a little tip sheet. Yeah. We did create yeah. a while ago some social media guidelines, which I think would be important for us to share again um, yeah. now that we're going to be pushing out much more content. Um, but it is, I think it's going to be interesting if everybody continues to share, we can, from the source, which is, which is our uh, post, we'll be able to see the analytics and we can look at them. You know, I can give an update as to what things are looking like, but, you know, I can have an increase in page likes and I can have, if, if so many people are sharing our post that increases our reach and we can kind of get a gauge as to how many people are seeing our posts. So coming from the source is important. Yeah. So I think that, also it might, that it might, oh, sorry. It might be a good time for a reminder. We'll start with Beth. <laughs> uh, now I lost my train. Oh, um, I did lose my train of thought. Oh, so you have a baseline now kind of cat, if we could call it that. Right. And then we try to, you know, make a pitch for it tonight and then you can kind of see if it has any traction and if it helps increase yeah, and we can see what, you know, what posts are more popular, what posts are, are performing better than others. It'll kind of give us a gauge as to uh, how people prefer our social media interactions to be. So we can start to kind of track those analytics a little bit more closely. And then if we're making suggestions tonight, and just as far as inviting people to the page, which sounds really simple, and we probably should have done that already, but I, I do it every so often just to I think because if people don't like it immediately, you get another chance if you wait a while and you can do it again. Um, but I noticed there were Facebook events now for the neighborhood meetings. So that's another thing to share and invite people to. I think there's both options, right? You can share it to your page, but you could also specifically invite people that you think would be interested. So if they live in that neighborhood or. Yeah, good, good point, Beth. That was something I was going to bring up too, is that I created events for each of the individual neighborhood meetings. And then once the topic Thursday um, kind of save the date flyer comes out, I'll create additional topic Thursday ones. So I'm kind of giving a save the date and then going to follow up for each of the individual ones. Yeah, and those are great because they give you reminders when they're coming up. If you say that you're interested or going, it's built in. Okay, that was it. Okay, so maybe we'll go back to, um, since we're talking about the community events, I would think that uh, the Tall Timbers update uh, would be a lot. It would actually focus on the events. So um, we have several events coming up and uh, Meg and Kat can uh, add anything they, they would like, but we have been meeting. We have um, different groups uh, who have signed up or different individuals who have signed up like administrators here in Farmington and um, making sure that we have Board of Ed representation and Town Council representation and PTO representation and even teacher representation as we're uh, presenting not only to the community neighborhood events, but also thinking about our topic Thursday events as well. So um, Meg or Kat, do you have any updates related to our very rigorous community schedule, uh, event schedule that we have established. Go ahead, Meg. Okay. Um, yeah, we have received um, feedback that the, the due date is actually by the end of the day today to have updates from um, all our partners, uh, as Kathy just mentioned, so that to make sure that we have representation at every single meeting. Um, and we're obviously building the content for all those meetings so that people have uh, talking points and know what information we're sharing um, and, and, you know, to make sure that we have uh, consistent messaging and, and focused messaging at, at each one of the meetings. So that's underway. Uh, we have almost our whole schedule filled at this point. We're just um, trying to uh, manage through a few conflicts, uh, but very, very few. So it's been wonderful. Everybody's level of engagement. I really appreciate it. I know this is tough. Um, I know this is personal time uh, for everyone. So all of this engagement is, I think, is really going to be critical and is a key part of the success here. Um, and that includes uh, PAC participation. So uh, we've been very engaged in communications with uh, our PAC groups and uh, making sure that they have um, the information they need, uh, as well as I actually am attending a meeting tomorrow night, Kathy's 
um, superintendent forum meeting to uh, address PTOs and PTO representatives and help explain to them how they can support the effort as well. Um, that's prior to our meeting that we have scheduled. I think it's April 1st, I think, right, is the PTO meeting, um, which is great. So I think we're, it's all lining up um, and we've got the right people uh, and we'll have the right messaging, which is great. And it's gonna be a long haul from here until mid-May. And I just, one thing I do wanna acknowledge and I'll do it again tonight is I understand that, I appreciate it. Uh, this is, I, I know this is a large commitment, but I, we've worked so hard to get here and I think you know, if we push through to May 11th and then uh, beyond with additional support from our partners, I think, you know, I think we're gonna make this happen. So um, this is, this, it's a lot of work, but I think we've got the right plan in place. And one thing just to add is we are refining, like Kathy said, our uh, presentations and our information, and we're going to have um, information so when you jump into the meeting that you're either the lead on or you're supporting, uh, you'll have everything you need to know about, you know, how it's going to run, what is going to be said, what the presentation will look like. So we're working to prepare all of that as well. I think just to define that a little bit more, Kat, I, you know, so everybody's clear and I think we've discussed this, but the neighborhood meetings are really the same content. So I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. We're not recreating anything for those um, as far as I know uh, yet. I don't think that unless we see a gap in a previous meeting that we would need to fill. But really what we're looking at is focusing that neighborhood communication around you know, your own neighbors. That's why we tried to get people in those meetings that lived in the neighborhoods that we designated. Um, and that's important for people to see that connection and be able to reach out uh, to somebody that, you know, that, that, that they might even know that is their actual neighbor. Uh, so that's important to understand that it's not, we're same messaging, we're being, we're being delivered in those neighborhoods. And then the topic meetings are going to be very specific as well. Right. So um, build that content and there'll be a big part of that. Oh, did you we, lose me? We lost you. We lost yeah. you for like 10 seconds. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. My, the internet connection is not the best. Um, so wh where did I leave off? Just content? I yeah. don't think I said anything all that important, but just, <laughs> 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 I just don't want anybody to think that we're re like, there's a lot of meetings on the calendar. But that's a lot of repeat content was really my point. We're not, it's not about, you know, recreating every single meeting. This is delivering the same message over and over and over and over again. And that's the only way this is going to succeed. So just want to make sure I got that point out there. And I think it's important to note that our first meeting, I think, went well. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, this was a redo, I guess, uh, or an update. So a little different than maybe it might go with uh, the next uh, meetings coming up. But I think we had some good questions, a good response. Um, and, you know, we're, we'll be there for the rest of them. So. I, I have a question about pro kind of promotion, I guess you would call it. And I know, Kat, you just set up so much on Facebook, um, but I'm wondering about people who might want to invite neighbors that could certainly do a Zoom meeting. I mean, I know even clients of the Senior Center have been doing their activities via Zoom, but neighbors that might not be on Facebook, you know, and that covers really all age groups. That So what's the best way to get the word out, um, both personally and then from the, the town or the committee to those people? Do we have, I know we have an email list, but I don't know how active it is. So we have um, a MailChimp account that has 300 plus uh, people on the distribution list. We'll be utilizing that. Um, the full schedule with all of the Zoom links are in the newsletter, and that is going to every single household. Um, it's a dedicated page, so I think that's a good way to reach people that may not be on social media or on our email list. Um, so that will be in every household. And then we'll utilize Everbridge, we'll utilize Friday folders, um, okay. and then really just, just having people in those neighborhoods help spread the word because, you know, word of mouth on both surveys we've conducted is the most popular way of, of spreading. Right. Word. Okay, so for like an email notice, if we were on that Everbridge list or the list from the building committee, that's something we could forward. Yes. I have a neighborhood, we have like a neighborhood email 
Oh, or, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could forward the MailChimp. Okay, perfect. I mean, we have a Facebook one too, but I just want to make sure I'm reaching everyone because it's a slightly different group in each. And maybe, Beth, when you do something like that, you can point them to rem the newsletter that you received has the full schedule. Right. So, you know, you may, this is our neighborhood meeting coming up next Wednesday, but, you know, there's also all of these meetings in case you can't make it. Right. Okay. Great. And then community Facebook pages, which I know can be tricky, but do we feel like we should be sharing those to Unionville Talks and Talk of Farmington? Meaning what, Beth? What do you mean sharing? Uh, events. To them? I'm going to say no. That's my personal opinion. Okay. I, I don't, somebody oh. can tell me something differently. I don't know, but I'm, I would love to have it driven directly from us off our, as, a, yep. as us being a resource. Doesn't mean that people aren't going to do it, but I don't know if it should necessarily come from us. Right. To gotcha. do it. And I totally get that. Just putting it out there. Yep. But that no, also, well, it sort okay. of gets into what we should be. I don't think we finished the conversation about tonight and social media, what we should remind the building committee of, but um, back when we, we started to talk about the first, the first time about communication is that we, we need to remind the building company that any, um, interaction on social media should be, uh, strictly from a building committee member, informational and civil. Um, we have, now we have a wealth of information. We have the whole FAQ. Um, and as I think Megan or Kat was saying, it's the same message over and over again, even if we have to say it over and over again, um, and not to create, uh, I would term them rabbit holes. Right, right. Good, good point, Ellen. And, you know, as if Ira was here, he would say, um, explain, don't defend. So point back to the website, point to the information. We have all of the answers. We, you know, it's really just focusing and really, if you directing people to the, the spot on the website where the information is, a, a true and trusted source, that's the way to, to engage people. It, to be perfectly honest, um, you know, and that goes into beyond because we're also using our personal accounts. Um, if we see something, I'll just use an example. If I ever saw something attached to mine that was um, distorted or uh, untruthful, I would, I would just delete it. And I think that's okay. Could I just also add to the uh, Comprehensive Farmington had a, uh, I know it's going to be in our newsletter, but they had, I, I saw somewhere, a one pager of all of the meetings to, um, to, to go through social media. And I thought having all of the meetings on one page would also, not just the newsletter, but do we have some sort of a flyer like that with all of the meetings on it? Yep, that would be what was it, the same content that was included in the uh, newsletter. I would take that because it has the meeting uh, information, the Zoom link, the date, it has everything you need on that one page. So that's in the works to, to be shared. Perfect. And the yeah, Zoom link. Oh. No, I'll probably link that, the, the newsletter to my weekly letter this week. So everyone has access to all the Zoom links uh, for the upcoming community events. Great. And then with the Zoom links, if someone sees that on paper, are they easy enough to type into your browser? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, the, the PDF of the newsletter is actually, you could click on it and it'll bring you right to the Zoom yeah. meeting. Um, so I think that's a good way to share if it. If people aren't comfortable with Zoom and don't know how to enter it, you really, if you go into Zoom to enter a meeting and just enter those last, whatever the numbers are, you can join the meeting. Um, right. Maybe we can have a explanation on the website for people that don't know how to join Zoom um, okay. of how to do that might be a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Also, is there any chance that we could have something put up in the Farmington Library now that the hours are expanding? because I think that might reach another audience. Mm. Yep, absolutely. What we can do is print, I, I think the most important thing is to drive people to the website and encourage mm -hmm. people to attend our events. Um, so we could have that one page <clears throat> event list there. I think would probably okay. be the best, the best okay. way to, to spread the information. 
And then I know the patches, um, you know, it's not what it used to be about with um, non-productive dialogue. It's really just a good way to announce community events. And I think for people not on Facebook, but who are online, that might be a good option. I'm just throwing that out there. I know yeah. the Hartford Current doesn't really do much digitally. I, I think there's still a way to um, promote community events through the Hartford Current website, but I haven't done that in a long time. I'm sure it's changed. I know on the patch, you can just upload, you know, like submit your event and it'll show yeah, up. Yeah, very easy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, great ideas. Um, so anything else on Tall Timbers or other updates? So Ira just texted me to say he's on an emergency call, um, but said that he would be jumping on uh, with us shortly. So I said I would let everybody know. Thank you. All right, so um, to new business, uh, to discuss the communications plan. So I don't know, Kat, are you going to? Yeah, well, this is just a standing item, um, just in case we had any additional things we wanted to discuss about the meetings coming up, because that's really the key to our communication is those upcoming meetings. Um, but I, I think we covered everything unless Meg has anything else or anybody has any other um, questions or comments around that. I don't think I have anything in addition. I think we touched, you know, I think we now can see that, you know, tonight if we put some focus on some social media discussion. Um, with the building committee, I think that's going to fill a little bit of a gap that we've identified, which is great. Um, I don't, I mean, there's nothing that I think is pressing that we haven't discussed other than that. Pat and Gang, I'm sorry. I was on emergency calls, another client that just got off. Sorry. I mean, you're all my major clients, but this is something I had to deal with right away. So I apologize for joining late. Um, is there anything you need me to say that was missed? I'm sure you guys covered everything. I'm familiar. The only thing I'm doing is I'm working on the uh, slide deck for the neighborhood meetings, Kat. And so I'm integrating a lot of stuff that was we talked about. So I'm gonna get that over to you. It's hard to share with everybody. So I just want, I was working on it last night and there were just some gaps I thought in the beginning, I wanna put Kathy's material right up front that she sent. So I'm resequencing it a little bit and just guys take a look at it, okay? Because mm -hmm. I, I wanna make a parallel to the side by side uh, so this becomes an integrated package. It's it's so hard to do. So basically, the, you know, the slide deck is kind of give the overview, top of mind, and this and the side by side just makes the case for a new building. And you know, so there was no way I was trying to integrate both into one thing, and it would just end up being a thirty minute kind of presentation, which I which we we can. And I thought that would just be too much. So leave kind of each each neighborhood we do is who's ever running it can move at their own pace and that will keep the uh, side by side as a standard amount of time to do it. So I just want to get your, if, if you're thinking on that, that's, uh, I'm trying to do it so people have all the right information. And Kathy, that information you sent over, those two slides were perfect. Okay. The stick right now, right up front. So I'm, I'm rejuggling, I'm sorry, you know, if you don't mind Kat, cause you just sent it around, but it's so hard to share. I was going to put it up on uh, Google Drive, but when you do these slide decks, it's kind of hard to share them. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. I, I want to finalize it before we kind of distribute it and make sure it's ready to go. So yeah, just when you have time, we'll, we'll work on finishing that up. Yeah, yeah I'll get it to you. Uh, actually, within an hour or two, I was working right. on it for quite a while yesterday. I just, I mean, it's a great start and it was an important conversation we had yesterday for the people who weren't on that call. Um, we wanted to start planning how we're going to do all these neighborhood ones, the topics, and start having some standardized language and messaging that no matter who's presenting or supervising, they just use this information versus wandering down all over the place. And also dealing with some secondary issues that you know might pop up, like why aren't we renovating the high school, you know, the 1928 building. There's gonna be these side things and what you don't wanna do is spend so much time. We wanna focus about the future. Everything's about the future with these presentations. And, you know, and then rationale for why we're doing it. Otherwise, it just, you know, you're just going to go down places that you don't want to go that, you know, this is all, uh, again, as you probably heard, this is all about controlling the agenda and the message. And then hopefully then the groups after goes to a quiet period, just, just 
go and start using it. I did ask, um, and Kat, I thanks for saying that over, to get a list of the actual groups who used a building that are not part of the daily uh, 9, 10, uh, 9, 12 classes after school hours. It's a, been a big help in other districts. We did high schools, you know, who are these groups? They should know about it. You want their endorsements and support. So I assume, uh, Kat, I, I saw the email there. And I did get one back also. They want more feedback about the auditorium, the music, uh, and a little more about the uh, gymnasium, the, uh, the improvements. Kathy, if you have anything, they want me to, I've been looking through the reports when I got that message yesterday from Scott. I don't know if he CC'd you on it about a little bit more why the acoustics, whatever's going to go on other than the ADA stuff. We felt that was too narrow an issue, even though we want to do it. So that's the only thing I just want to add to your discussion here, though. You know, we're just really refining kind of key points of the, what's going to go on a new building comparing with the other one. Um, unless I miss something here, you know, you want to share off hours, Kat or Kathy or, or Megan, let me know. No, I think we're in good shape, just finalizing everything. Definitely. It's down to that refinement stage. Yeah, okay. Again, I apologize for getting on late. We were able to do all the updates. Ira, you would have been proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, you know, <laughs> grandpa here, you know. <laughs> Sleep a little later than normal. <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> No, I enjoy you guys are, let me just give you a heads up of the 60 projects I've done over 20 years. You guys are in a perfect place, perfect time. All these presentations, I've never seen arrangement of 16 presentations. And unfortunately we got to live in a Zoom line, but right now the most important thing is getting this information out. The newsletter will be getting in the households this weekend with all the list of the dates. Did you show the newsletter? Should we show them what's on there? Kat, can I do that? Um, Devin could probably pull it up. He has Devin, Devin can you pull it up and show the calendar listing? So, so give you guys a heads up. So it's hardly any you see. It's going to be posted on the website. It, it's up there, Ira. Excuse we posted, me? We posted the website, the newsletter. Okay. We're updating up there, which we, call, we want to focus on local news right up front. Sticking with the, what we want the... Uh, website to be, which is more of a newspaper approach. Whatever is new and coming is always going to be posted right up front. And Dev and I are going to work on that on a really daily basis to pay attention, what has to be updated and what can be followed. All right, so it's a quick tour of this, uh, if you don't mind. So here's the overstatement here. Uh, some of you have seen this already. We want to give a context where the building's going to be. Status of 28 building. Uh, the most important thing was I called voter registration over there. There's still a lot of people who moved to town haven't registered. I assume it's young parents. So we want to get that message out, make sure they go and register. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't have to read it right now. Just go ahead, next page. Just want to show you what's on it. This is a highlight of the survey, which I thought the most important things. The feedback I'm getting most of uh, is... Uh, on here to respond 65 and older made up 45 percent of respondents but only make up 17 percent of the town population and they should share that with ptos now, it's a shame so few parents responded back to the survey um, this is again talking about we want to visually show what the uh, estimated the tax would be on the average cost of a home of three hundred twenty-four thousand dollars and so we want to show a cross-section of a, as much as possible, a generic cross-section. That's technology, workout stuff that might be going on in a typical house. So it's always good to have a graphic kind of laid up. Okay. We don't want to use a photograph of a house, but some say, that's not my house. So you always want to keep these kind of images generic. Um, next one. These are enrollment projections. It's always good to show a chart where it goes up, even though it looks minimal here. So we want to focus on that. So a lot of districts are actually going down, but Farmington is going up. And so, you know, 131 students is a lot. You know, when you're talking, what's around $30,000 a student, Kathy, if not more later on, you're talking some serious money, four or $5 million more that I might have to go into it. Okay, so that gives that chart. All right, and this is the one here, it's on in the newsletter. This is listing all the meetings, public meetings and the URLs. Um, people get it in paper, will have to re-enter it, but 
where it's telling people to go to the website, to, you know, they can then click on it and it'll automatically take them during that time. We assume they'll go on. We didn't put in, please do in five minutes early. We're also not allowing face visits and, and all chats. We're not going to have people uh, having a dialogue. We're going to ask people to submit uh, questions in writing. And so that means the moderator can control it. Um, and so whoever we're signing from the building committee, Meg, they are actually acting as the moderator. So when questions come in, they can uh, submit it to, the, uh, to whoever the appropriate person. It could be a board of ed, it could be whatever. That's why it's good to have that, that kind of group uh, on there. It represents the whole town. Um, so that's the uh, way it's gonna be. So it's moderated and people can participate, but it's gonna be a Q and A, uh, but not a, a video dialogue. The only videos I assume will be showing is just the people who are representing the different groups in town. So this is, uh, this is the way it's gonna be. And it goes all the way to May 5th. Um, so again, this will be in every household, probably from Saturday till next Tuesday. And then there's gonna be one more newsletter, which is really not gonna be a newsletter. It's gonna be an uh, infographic. It's a, actually a poster. It's gonna be 18 by 24. That's gonna take us completely through the new high school, what it, you know, schematically what it's gonna look like. It's kind of like a journey, you know, it's like you, you follow the trail, this is what this is gonna do and break it out with information. And then parents can sit down in elementary school and go through with their kids and saying, here's what you're gonna be going into. So that's probably the plan going forward all the way up to referendum posting. So I just wanna give you all a highlight how we see this playing out. And again, as many people as we can to get to these meetings and participate. Um, and that'll be, you know, minimize the nonsense talk. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Devin. I don't know if anyone has any questions about it, but you, if you go online, you can see it on, you know, now we just showed it to you, but you're gonna get in your households. And we ordered an extra 250, Megan, Kat, and Kathy, just in case people, you can leave them at each of the three, uh, leave them at your two places, the town hall, and, and, the, and the board of you know, the board of town hall and at the high school and it's different you know people want it you know they say I didn't get it I talked to the post office it was 99.5 percent delivery so people say they didn't get it they probably threw it out by mistake or then they look at it as junk mail it's pretty typical I just made probably five percent just didn't even see what it was Ira, this is Ellen was the date on there of the referendum or was it just the June I couldn't really see it uh, no, we did not put on this one. The next newsletter will have all that information. Since the yes, town, yes, town did not, Kat, do you want to answer it? We, we literally did not put it on because we don't know. Right. And, and it's usually um, when we put it on, on the next one, because it'll probably be before it's officially set, we would put it as tentative date for June 3rd, um, just because it'll be May 11th that the town council sets it. Yeah, we did put it, we, they put it in the copy. Yeah, it says early June. It yeah. doesn't say the we exact We just said date. early June. We just, you know, we can't jump the gun and do it when it, you know, technically and legally the town council hasn't authorized it. But the assumption being if everything falls in place, you know, they will, they will go ahead and do it. So that's why all this uh, is being done right now. I, I had a question, Kat, and it's only because my mother lives here now in, um, you know, one of the senior housing facilities. So she has her own mailing within that facility. So does every resident in those facilities get a copy of the newsletter or is it just one goes to that particular address? It's just- I think it would be to every mailing address okay. um, in the town. We, we run a, a PO count and we update it when we send out things because things shift, you know, every time we send out a newsletter. So I think she should get it. Okay. Um, piggybacking on that, we are doing um, the senior. We're having two meetings with seniors. Um, so we're creating a specific flyer for them and starting to put it and advertise. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're also going to be giving that flyer to Westerly Anthology, all of the um, housing facilities that we have in town, Maple Village as well, so that they can join the meeting. It's all um, on Zoom. 
but Nancy Parent at the Senior Center is also going to allow for some seniors to come to the center and be able to social distance and project it on the on the screen. So that would be limited attendance, um, but for those that aren't tech savvy, it, it's an option as well. Have, have, let me ask you, Kat, of all the, how many centers are there or, or, or uh, living places, assisted living in, in Farmington? I forgot to look that up. There's got to be seven. Yeah, five, five to seven, I, off the top of our heads. Um, are, are, they, are, they, are they isolated inside the facility as much as, you know, I, I assume most of them have got both shots already? No. Or, or, no? Or they A have? lot of them, I mean, depending. Yeah. But, but I wanted to bring this up because I think Nancy Parent and the connection with the Senior Center is great. And those are mostly, but those are mostly seniors who live on their own, who participate in the Senior Center activities. Right. And what I've found is that the senior housing places, these private places tend to provide everything the residents there could need. And they like to keep them kind of contained for their recreation activities. So they typically don't have a lot of connection, if any, with the senior center. Right. So I'm glad to hear we're gonna be getting flyers out. I wonder if, I don't know if we have the resources to do this, but they could probably project the way Nancy's going to do they mm -hmm. have conference rooms and I mean, there's a theater over at. Um, yes, that, that's what we were thinking, exactly. In, in their common room or whatever that they can yeah. have it up, have the information, the stream of the the um, the meeting so that it's, it's available. Let me ask that you. Would take some connection. They, they have um, every week, just because I, I know um, this a little more now, but they have an activity schedule. And if we can get that meeting on an activity schedule, you'll get a lot more yeah. residents going yes. to it, you know, learn about our proposed new high school in Farmington. And they, there's a lot of participation on, in the activities. And actually I keep track of the ones my mom goes to. So I do know like they, they actually, actually do keep track of all of that. So we'd even get that information at least with the, the facility that she's in. But you're absolutely right, Beth, they have like actual spaces that they can gather. And I know at least in the one my mom's in, everyone's fully vaccinated. So. Yeah. Kathy, or, or does anyone know, or Beth, are there any retired teachers in any of these facilities that taught in Farmington? It's possible. I, I don't know. No. Yeah, you know, it's possible. I, I don't know if you're a supporter, but I've, I've met a formal town, former town council chair, I believe, who's at Middlewoods. So whenever we're campaigning and we... Well, I'll tell you what's helped because we've done these senior centers over the years yeah. or before this. If there's someone in there who's a real advocate for this, and as you're presenting it, if there's someone in there saying, you know what, this is really going to be good for future generations, your grandkids, or you live in town. Right. Having an advocate in each of those places that's comfortable in front of it after you do the presentations, it would be, it's like pure lobbying. <laughs> That really I don't would know be how we could help. find that out, but we could certainly, I think, you know, maybe Kathy Greeter and, and we can just try to talk amongst our networks and see if people know of people or neighbors who are there. But I did want to pitch something similar for these senior meetings, and that would be a community, you know, well-known senior citizen who could kind of be a, a bass ambassador for the project. And I'm thinking of B. Stockwell. Mm -hmm. to maybe kind of be on the speaker side. Just talk about what it means for that population and the community from a senior perspective. So I spoke with, I spoke with her yesterday. We're working that in. And, um, and I was going to speak with Megan and she is, I've given her the dates of both of the, and she's good on a computer. I've given yep. her the dates and she wants more than anything to be there. And I think the word ambassador for this project is perfect. And she's um, yeah. she's very well known and people trust her and listen to her. So yes. she's, I, I, I think that um, sh she'll be at both meetings and she'll be- oh, that's great. I think that's huge. Iris, that, she was- That's um, okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't talk to Megan yet. Yeah, sorry, I might have jumped the gun, but I really- No, that's, that's perfect. I, I think it's fantastic. Thank you guys for doing that. Yeah, one more thing. We did one in Southbury, uh, the, the regional school district there, and Heritage Village is jumbo activity. Yes. And we had ambassadors, Ellen, as you mentioned, in there. 
who had kids in town or multi-generational, it made a huge difference. They actually voted for a large you know, referendum for the high school and other projects because we spent so much time over at Heritage Village, or they did, where the superintendent board members, they just went over there because Middlebury was against this and Southbury was a bigger town than doing it, but we eventually got some Middlebury ones here. So it makes a big difference on you know, having people who are in there pointing out the family multi-generational need. That simple message would be a big help if you can identify more of these people, these places. Just even having equal votes would make it, uh, you know, or equal support would be a big difference. Yeah, and the other thing that comes up in these facilities is there is some, you know, turnover. It can be, you know, lots of new people, particularly with the newer facilities coming in, and they're not necessarily know how to register to vote or change their address. You know, there could be a lot of people that have moved in in the past few months since the November election. Um, so we, we might get questions about that. Does a registered voters have any program to reach out, Beth, to those groups? I'm sorry? When, so, when someone moves to town, is there some method, some towns have an outreach program for new residents? They go to the real estate people? Not that I'm aware of. Or is there a way that the director of each of these centers say, hey, do you have any new residents that we should know about? Make sure they're registered. I, I think they do. I think our registrar our voters, I think... Um, there's, they, I think they do get a listing of new residents. I don't know what they do with it if it's that active, but potentially it might be a good idea just to, at all of these meetings, just as an agenda item to remind um, yeah. all residents, not just seniors, right. uh, to register to vote. That might be a good uh, sound. Yeah, I think your young parents who move there or whatever are so busy with their lives. Yep. We noticed they're the least registered are the ones that need a real uh, program to reach out and make sure whatever, I don't know if it's two weeks, a week, each town does it differently. I don't know if there's a state ruling anymore overrides the towns. And I, I can't remember. I have to look up the election laws regarding it because they change it all the time. Because with the last one day, you're actually a day before you can register because of uh, uh, the COVID crisis. Mm. Yeah, we have to look into that. I would just say that it for people who are fine online, it's so easy now to go on and change your registration, update your registration on the Secretary of State's website. So that might be a link we want to include in the presentation or just tell people to search for that if they're new or and that they, they do need to update their address, even if they just moved from West Harvard. Yeah. That, that needs yeah, to be in order before they can I know this is, this is really nitty gritty stuff, but at the end of the day, it makes a big difference. Um, and Kathy, I think I was just thinking about, is everyone getting the newsletter at each of these retirement places? Um, is there a way you have, do we have the names or addresses and you, a, a mag of the, the directors of these facilities to make sure they're, they're delivered or they're getting them? Because it's possible that they lump them in a pile, each mail delivery, depending on because of COVID, they might not be able to go inside. I don't, I'm not quite sure their policy to post office, but we should double check with the directors at each of these facilities to make sure people are living there are getting this, these newsletters. Yeah, so, we could always drop some off and too, if that is the case. I know for the place that my mom's in, she does get mail. So I actually saw a Mike D'Amico flyer on in her room. So I know she does receive um, okay. the mailing. So Kathy, I think- I think each gets a newsletter, but I wasn't sure on our side. Kathy, where your mom is, do they have post post? Do they have their own post office box, their own um, mailbox? Yes, because she receives bills and things. Yeah, like that. so so, so it, it works. A, it it works the same way as in a house. So everybody, so the, the I don't believe that the directors can receive mail and then distribute it, right? Because it's the post office has to make sure it gets to a lock box where the resident or, or an aide, right, can pick up their mail um, and deliver it. I, you know, success with some of these things pre-COVID where we've seen, um, you know, uh, the candidates running for office or whatever might come in and speak to residents where you used to be able to be in front of a group or to talk about uh, a project or what's up and coming, um, you know, serve some ice cream and and have uh you know ha have have something other than the the event to come down to and you'll get a large group 
And they used to literally have cables outside the hallway with um, absentee ballots that uh, they would they could fill out <clears throat> and sign, you know get their absentee vote because they're not going to get in their cars and drive uh, to vote. And the the you know the facility may or may not offer transportation uh, you know to residents to vote for something like this. I think a big draw. Or something to that that might resonate with those folks are a lot of these high school. I don't know. I don't know about Farmington high school kids, but in other facilities, high school kids, especially over the summer, tend to work in the dining okay. facility. They're serving mom and dad. You know, they're they're serving um, their their wait staff, their part time staff there, and the residents get to know and love them, right? Because they see them every day, and you know. Um, so if there's a way, um, to say that this is important to the, you know, the kid, these kids that are serving you, that resonates with them, that's touched, you know, that touches them. Um, so I don't know, just some of the things that I know, you know, might, might be touch points, uh, that, that will, um, you know, pull on their heartstrings a little bit to want to, to want to, mm -hmm. to want to vote for this. Okay. One more thing, Scott, I just gonna ask you this, is that it's my understanding there's a lot of recent graduates, freshmen and sophomore who are living in town because of you know, distance, uh, at least to the end of this year, where they are not gonna go back to Yukon or local places. Is there any way to reach out? Do you have those mailings? Or I know we gotta be careful here, but it might be a good way for them to get engaged saying, you know, hey, you should be aware of this. Or are you number one, are you registered to vote? Um, is there some campaign that you do in a high school where they register vote when they turn 18? Yes, we do. So, uh, so that is, that's organized through our student activities and that'll be occurring, um, in the next month before, um, you know, before this happens. So we have that. And then I meet, uh, regularly with our director of student activities. We have a meeting scheduled for Friday, um, you know, so certain groups like our, you know, both our assistant principal, who was the former director of student activities and our current director of student activities, stay pretty closely engaged with like our class officers and things like that that have graduated. And so, um, you know, we plan to inform them of the work. They were actively involved last year uh, prior to COVID as well. So we'll notify them in, in my um, well, obviously we can't tell them what to do. My inclination is that they'll activate their social media networks and and things like that as well. So we can so we can send or link them at least to the newsletter and the website. Is that minimally what we can do right now? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's totally because now, now we talked about the retirement communities. Let's talk about the recent graduates who are many of them living in town. I'm my understanding, Kathy, do they stay in touch? One because they're staying in town. Are they? I mean, they won't go to the high school, but you know, they might be involved much more in social media. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Hey guys, I apologize. I need to jump off. Um, okay. But uh, again, thank you. I'll um, see you guys tonight. Anything else right, you need you from me? I don't. No, I think we're good. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Great. Thanks. Okay, Mark. Yeah, so we're getting, we're getting to about an hour, so we probably should finish up. So, Kat, did you have something? Yeah, I just see that Marcus has his hand up. Hey, um, guys, real quick, two things. One, about voting. I've been um, in contact with the Registrar of Voters Office. They, there is no provision for same-day registration on the day of a referendum. However, um, so you need to be registered a week before. And um, uh, there, you can request an absentee ballot at any time, but provided that the June 3rd date sticks, the ballots would physically be available um, on the 13th of May. So two days after the town council um, signs off on everything. Um, so for, for what it's worth, there's that. There's also a provision for non-residents who own property in town, taxable property in town to be able to vote in a referendum. Um, so there's a lot of information from the Registrar of Voters Office that, that is very relevant to this particular election. And I would encourage the committee to um, be in contact with the registrar's office and to make that information um, readily available on the website. Um, and related to that, this newsletter, this March newsletter is jam packed full of really good information. 
And, and I'm wondering if some of it can end up um, not just in a PDF that's a little bit buried on the site, but if you could bring it up to um, maybe like an FAQ thing, like the um, enrollment um, information is really good information to have. And I'm wondering if that might be able to go into the FAQs along with information about, um, about voting as well. So just you have the information um, and I'm sure there's a plan to make it um, easier to find on the website, but I think that would be a good thing to do if we can. If we put it on, the, it's in the slide deck already that we're working on, Marcus, with Kat and the crew. Is that, that we put that uh, information in, it's going be part of the presentation to all, all 16 uh, presentations, I mean, all the ones where community outreach. Yeah, that's good. And I, I think it would be good to have um, a way for for um, other groups and other people to be able to point to the, the building committee website and say, that information is right here. Um, you know, you don't have to dig for it. So if we had like direct links to the um, enrollment projections or instead of having say, it's in this slide deck, go through the slide deck, um, which is useful. But if it's, if there's a specific place, like this is the link that goes right to the enrollment projections, or this is the link that goes right to um, the voting information. I think that would be, that would be helpful to have. Thank you. Um, so any other items before we adjourn? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, Ellen. Second. Seconded, Sharon. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you all so much. This was a lot of information, but I feel like we're really moving forward on so many of the items that we had started to plan for so many months ago. So thank you everyone.